Well, praise the Lord in Jesus' holy and blessed name. What a beautiful day it is to be in Jesus. Oh, amen. Amen. Brother Thomas with you here, and this is a ministry of Jesus Christ. And brothers and sisters, today we're going to pick up right where we left off our last time together in Proverbs. We're in chapter one. We were looking at verse 22. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and the fools hate knowledge. As we concluded, our three groups come to the Bible with wrong motives. They come to prove themselves right, not to be reproved or corrected. For the simple ones, they are open to good, but also far, also far off, too often, <laughs> they are influenced for evil. Life is simple for them. The scorner despises that which is godly and takes pride in their evil works. The Hebrew word for scorner seems to have arisen during Solomon's time when prosperity allowed for the growth of such indifference and pride. This should speak volumes to America today, who quite often do enjoy the benefits of prosperity. Yes, indeed. Thirdly, wisdom addressed herself to the fools. These are those, quote unquote, stupid people who are totally confident in their own wisdom. And they believe they have things all figured out without God's aid. Now consider Isaiah chapter 28, verses 14 through 16. Wherefore hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule the people, which is in Jerusalem, because ye have said, we have made a covenant with death, and with hell are we at agreement. When the overflowing scourge shall pass through, it shall not come unto us. For we have made lies our refuge, and falsehood have we hid ourselves. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I lay in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believeth shall not make haste. Jesus Christ is this precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. And when we believe, we will not make haste <laughs> or fail to be saved. That's what it means to not make haste. It means fail to be saved. We will not fail to be saved. Christians know this is true when we read scriptures like 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. And here is that text. Consider it well in the light of our current subject, please. To whom coming as unto a, a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, speaking of Jesus Christ, ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scriptures, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believeth he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner, and a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they are appointed. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should shew forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Praise God. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 4 through 9. If we were to list out in three columns, Proverbs, Isaiah, and 1 Peter, 
We could begin drawing lines from word to word, subject to subject, to the point that it would become difficult to distinguish the lines. There are so many parallels that can be found. Here it's quoted as, shall not be confounded, same as not make haste, not fail to be saved. And amen and amen. It confounds the wisdom of this world over and over again, always has, and it will continue to. And amen. We are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, my favorite. <laughs> that we should shew forth the praises of God. Oh, and hallelujah. Yes, indeed. Peculiar people, indeed, we are. <laughs> and we also know that there will be many who will reject this commentary on the same grounds they do the scriptures. On the ground that it is truly shifting sand that they stand. For a few, this may clear their clouded vision to a slightly more deeply penetrating one. We pray for you. Yes, indeed. But we also know that many will reject on the same grounds that they reject the scriptures. I'm always praising God for the views that we receive and the, 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 po you know, the positive comments that we, we get and the support. Uh, a few of the occasional attacks that come uh, are of no consequence to it to me to deal with, we'll gladly deal with them. We will gladly deal with them. Uh, but there are many who are fit, will fit into this category. And a few of them have contacted us. They are the scorners. They are the foolish. Some simple. Oh God, that God will open their eyes to see the truth. Simple, honest, straightforward, standing at the gate, standing in the square, preaching, teaching the true word of God, that they will hear and understand. Amen? Oh, amen. All right. So once again, how long will you love simplicity, delight in scorning, and hate knowledge? Refuse the enticing sinner. Put no foot upon the path of evil and come to the Lord. Proverbs 1.23 is one of the most profound in our text and not only, but in all of scripture. This verse is at the heart of every evil call to come. Note, <laughs> It is the call of wisdom and the call of the Christian today. Here's 123. Turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Before considering its import to us today, let us first consider its immediate context. Wisdom pleads with people to come, to turn, quote unquote, to turn. Important to understand what we're being called to and what people are being called to, to turn. And the blessing for this turning is her spirit. Literally, her spirit will flow or gush upon those who make known her word uh, for those who turn. <laughs> let me read that again. Just be, and there will be fruit produced. Well, let me back up again here. Her spirit will flow or gush upon those who turn, period. <laughs> and there will be fruit produced by this flowing of her spirit. It will make known her word to us. This process of the wisdom's school 
will be completed. It will be completed. God is always providing opportunities for blessing. This is just one area of such blessings. Amen now? Amen now. Over the years, many have said that they would love to have a one-on-one -on -one sit down conversation with God. To which I think to myself, oh really? And I think you can have a one-on-one -on -one sit down conversation with God. And I'm not being cute, but most serious. Now, I do realize they often mean face-to-face -face as one man or two men sitting face-to-face, -face but <laughs> there is that day coming as well, although it won't be quite the sit-down conversation they're thinking. Amen and amen. But in the meantime, until that moment comes, the believer's relationship with God makes a one-on-one -on -one conversation every bit a true reality today, right now, right here. You can have one. Sit down. Talk to him. And he will answer you. Oh, yes, he will. Be open to the answer. It's not a one-sided conversation. So be open to the answer. As he will answer you in his way, in his truth, in his time. Receive it. Amen. All right. We'll get ready to close on that note. <laughs> This is the beginning of the one-on-one -on -one conversation that is available now and forever. It is in the moment of repentance or turning in which we see sin as God does. And it is so abhorrent amen, that we turn our back to it stepping off the path that leads to death and destruction and place our feet upon a path that leads to God. Our forgiveness, our justification found in the innocent blood, shed blood of Jesus Christ. The stone which the builders rejected has indeed become the head of the corner, the chief cornerstone. And therein is where our one-on-one -on -one conversation begins in recognizing this truth and receiving Jesus Christ in our prayer of repentance and forgiveness and in the receiving of Jesus Christ. It is a one-on-one -on -one conversation with God and he will answer you today, today. In Jesus' holy and blessed name, please believe that it's the truth. If you do not know Jesus today, you can. It's a sinner's prayer away. A one-on-one -on -one conversation with God. Consider it today. Oh, and brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, that you will be strengthened this day and encouraged to know that we may talk to our Heavenly Father any day, any hour, any time. What a blessing. In Jesus' holy and blessed name, Oh, and amen. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll see you next time.